the car payment affordability, people often ask, hey, Matt, listen, I'm, I'm stressed out. How much can I afford for my salary? What can I afford? I found this video here to help you guys out. Let's watch this video on car payment affordability. How much car payment can you actually afford per month? We got four terms, $1,500, $3,000, $4,500, $4, $4, This is your post-tax, i.e. take-home amount per month. So if you have a $1,500 take-home monthly income, your payment max is $225. Done. Now, if you have a $3,000 a month take home, your max payment cannot exceed $450. And if you got $675 at 4,500 and $900 at 6,000. Now, do you know what those all add up to? They add up to 15% monthly payments of income. So if you are- so there it is, 15%. So 50% of your take home pay should be allocated for car payment. In my opinion, it should be less than that. Really? Because you want to make sure you have a car payment that feels like a daggone cheeseburger, a $16 BLT, which we just talked about yeah. earlier. Because you got maintenance, you got car insurance, you got gas. These three things have also accelerated in terms of inflation and, 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 and whatnot. And oftentimes, we just, we just covered this on a previous podcast too, so we get a lot of views on this one. When I was overseas, when I was in Japan, I had a car that was 10 years old, 15 years old. I'd own it for six months, and then some other Marine would buy it for six months, and some other Marine would buy it, but it's all well-maintained. 10, 15-year-old car, we yeah. just pass around. That's the problem with America, is trying to impress people that don't have any involvement in your life, that don't have any involvement in paying your bills, and trying to flaunt them just to show status. 72% of Gen Zs have a car loan. 52% of millennials have a car loan. Do you need a brand new $45,000, $50,000 car? Well, you want to know a former G Loop hood technician confession? A Toyota, a Honda would come in. I pop open the hood, clean engine. Must be the first oil change. I look inside, brother, 100,000 miles. A Suburban comes in, Escalade comes in, Tahoe comes in. The fluid you can see sure. just leaking around it. I look at how many oil changes, how many, how many miles does this bad boy have? First oil change. This narrative is not good for what? This narrative is not good. What I just mentioned in the last 30 seconds, it's yeah. not good for car dealerships because they don't get to turn cars. And it's not good for the banks either because they don't get to lend money. And by the way, I don't want to dissuade you to as well. Ideally, you should buy a car cash anyway. Uh, because it's a depreciating asset, because you're financing something that's appreciating in cost, but depreciating in value. It's a bad combination to your net worth. Okay, well, okay, let me ask you. If you currently have a car payment, not you, but anyone, currently has a car payment, and they got a nice bonus check where they got some capital where they can actually pay it off, would you recommend paying it off or keeping it as a revolving credit source? All right, that's a good question. Um, you know, if, if, if I'm not in business, if I'm, if I'm not an entrepreneur, you know, obviously, if you're not an entrepreneur, you don't have a side hustle, pay it off. Uh, sad, sad part about that move, though, you lose your liquid cash. Yeah. So do you invest? So in other words, if you have a 5 6 7 8% uh, uh, interest rate, finance charge, on, uh, interest rate on your, on, your, on your debt, could you earn more than that in a particular investment? By the way, I took that shot on me many, many years ago, and guess what I found? I was a better bet. But I started a side hustle. Yeah. So the purpose of the Seven Figure Squad viewer is that people that are starting a side hustle. So I'd say keep that money and incorporate the car payment into usage into your business. Put in service that car into your business in a side hustle. Document when you put your car into service in your car. And if you read the book, Lower Your Taxes Big Time in terms of how to properly document your car for business use to take advantage of bonus depreciation, to take advantage of 179, uh, Section 179 deductions, and you can use your car, I believe it's chapter three or chapter five, how to turn your car into a tax deductible gold mine if you start a side hustle. We're gonna put the link here in the description below, but watch the video also of, we talked to Sandy Bakken, the author of that book, to make sure you keep your cash. For me, I'm a big fan of as much, I'm, I'm hoarding as much cash, 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 cash as possible. Borrow as least or smartly as you can, because when push comes to shove, cash flow is king, cash is queen, credit's just for jokers. Yeah. Okay, and so and so you want to make sure you leverage your credit to 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 be your secondary form of banking. You're the first bank, but your credit is your secondary form of banking. So there's a discipline behind the price. Most times are very aggressive. They say bank, 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 credit, 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 lend, 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 lend. They have no liquid cash, and then when push comes to shove, they have no liquid cash. They're out of it. and They got to foreclose. They got to do a fire sale. They got to do an estate sale, and that's a bad type of scenario. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast. Click right here.